in cable analysis, we still assume that the total tension force distributes equally across the cables. This means that we still are conservatively taking the maximum force and dividing this by the number of cables to get our cable factor of safety, as shown here in the equation. However, we will eliminate the assumption that all cables have the same backstay angle. Remember how we used the handrail uh, alpha angle for all of the cables in order to set up our future calculations. Do you think splitting the cable forces up this way will change our cable capacity? No, but it will affect our other analyses down the road. So now we will take this opportunity to set up a new tab for tower analysis. This is separate from the tier one tower analysis, which looks at the entire tower, walkway, and tier configuration for overall overturning. Here, we are just looking at the forces in a single tower column. In future lectures, we will discuss the design and associated checks for that tower column. However, in this lecture, we will just look at cable forces. Regarding the top of the tower, we will first find the main span forces, axial, vertical, and horizontal, by take on, taking the total area of handrail cable over the total cable area to approximate the amount of force that is picked up by the handrail cables. This is multiplied by the main handrail axial tension. For the backstay, we will go through a similar process using the belt friction equation. And finally, for the forces on a single column, we will simply sum the force components and divide by two. Remember, for horizontal forces, the backstay and mainstay are pulling in opposite directions. So we have PT main. And there equal to area rel. Remember, this is the absolute value here for the um, horizontal forces because they're acting in opposite directions. And we notice throughout this H here, 
refers to the handrail cables. Now for the walkway forces, we'll go through the same procedure and find main, finding main span forces with cable area ratio, then backstay forces, then the components on a single column. And in this case, it's for the whole walkway. So we don't need to divide by two. And at this point, we'll move on and revisit tower analysis in a future lecture to discuss the reinforced concrete design and checks of the tower itself. And now we need to integrate our split cable calculations into the foundation analysis. And previously, we would find the main span and backstay tension and use the cable area ratio to split this into forces, the top of the tower and handrail. Um, sorry, at the top of the tower and saddle. Now uh, that we've already split our forces into components, we can find our four forces here um, with the tower analysis tab. We can take the vertical and horizontal forces on the walkway straight from this analysis. And for the forces on the specific tower, we'll just need to multiply by two. Finally, the last structural system affected by our cable split will be anchor analysis, both because these cables are pulling at different angles and have different forces. The two major changes for anchor analysis are the inclusion of the pH tower term, which I'll go over in the next slide, and different cable forces. Previously, we did the same as foundation analysis and used the main span to find the backstay to then find our horizontal and vertical forces on the anchor. Here, in order to calculate PV anchor and pH anchor, we will sum the handrail and uh, walkway backstay forces. The second component of uh, anchor analysis I referred to is the pH tower term. Notice that this will be detrimental to our sliding calculations, but is necessary to include to be conservative. This force occurs due to friction over the saddle. Because the main span horizontal tension is greater than the backstay, some of the handrail and walkway cables, there is a horizontal force at the tower that should be factored into the anchor analysis. Although we don't explicitly depend on the force transfer, transfer from tower to ramp walls to anchor, in the case that is applicable, we need to include this force. We can calculate pH tower as the main span tension minus the sum of the walkway and handrail backstay tensions. And we can imagine if our anchor is here, we have our ramp walls, our tiers and tower, and that pH tower acting here could, in theory, transfer to the ramp walls and transfer to the anchor. So it's worth including that pH tower um, horizontal force into our sliding calculations. Now that concludes our discussion of cable splitting and how to incorporate it into your design calculations. Remember that it will notably affect our cable analysis, foundation, tower, and anchor analyses. In the next lecture, we will discuss which friction coefficients to use when calculating these various forces. And remember to go into your design tool, play with this. Um, there'll be some speed bumps in incorporating it, uh, these new calculations, uh, but just make sure to go through methodically and make sure that the cable split is um, consistent throughout.